Hello. Hello. Hey, we said it at the same time. <laughs> Are you coming for my brand? <laughs> I am coming for your brand. It's mine now. I am Andre. Um. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. How are you doing? I'm good. I、uh, I had a long week, but I am ready to talk spooky with you. I mean, really talk scary. We have to stay on brand. <laughs>、um, how was your flight to Port? <laughs> I want you to tell the listeners about your Portland trip because you were teasing it at the end of episode six last week. So. Oh, okay. Do you want to hear about the actual trip itself, or like the horrible airline situation? The horrible airline situation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I had to wake up at three a.m. for a flight out of Portland, and that alone is like a horror story. But I rode this plane, right? And I, I'm super cautious. I probably could have gotten there like five a.m. because it was boarding at five thirty, and there was no security. Whatever, I'll lift it. The point is, when I get off this plane from Portland to San Francisco, suddenly I notice that my plane has been canceled. Then the like layover, it's canceled, and I'm like, okay, why? So. I go and I check my app, and I'm like standing in line, and people behind me are like, "What's going on? Where were you going?" I'm like, "Dude, this this is ridiculous." And so I find out that it was canceled due to wind, like a wind advisory or whatever. And so the app just automatically reassigned me to、um, a 8:30 a.m. the next day, and I was like, "Okay, that is not going to work. I am not spending like $200 on a hotel in San Francisco. I'm not going to be sleeping in this airport." So that was stupid. That was out. And so I found one that was、um, at 4 p.m. Like that was the earliest flight, and lo and behold, that got canceled a couple、mm-hmm. hours later. And the one after that, which was 9:30, got canceled the same time. And so I was like, okay, I'm not going to gamble. Wait here all night for the next one to get canceled. So I took a train. I took the BART, took it to、um, mm-hmm. Dublin. Dublin slash Pleasanton, and then my brother sent an Uber, and I Ubered literally forty five minutes to the ne- the town where my brother lives in, and that was that. I just waited for my mommy to come rescue me, and then we drove four hours home. Fun. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is, the wind was still there. Like it totally, like the next plane would have gotten canceled. I just know it because the plane I was supposed to take would have been the size of a bus because I took it, you know, towards Portland,、mm-hmm. and so like that would have been spinning around, and I was already feeling kind of sick from the. Flight into San Francisco, like turbulence, man. The point is, flying is terrible, and I hate the world. But that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope、um, you enjoyed that. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed it. I because you were talking last episode about how like something about yeah t- like basically like how airplanes were your biggest fear, but not for like the death factor, rather like. Yeah, and this is exactly what happened to you. I just found that amusing. <sighs> I'm very sorry. It's not amusing.、Um, It was irritating. Okay. I yeah, like I I remember、um, I was taking a, a plane from Sacramento to LA like a year ago, and it got canceled. And then the next flight got canceled, and I was like, I've been here for this many hours. I think I'm just gonna go home. And then I found out that I was right. Like they they just kept getting canceled.、Um, Yeah, I wouldn't have wanted to like stay there forever. So smart call, good call on your part.、Um, yeah. yeah, they didn't even have any planes from San Francisco to Sacramento. They were all booked. So like, I couldn't even do that. You know what、yeah. I mean? Like, I could have flown to Eureka or freaking Eugene, Oregon, and like, why would I do that? Like, that's not even close to where I need to go. <laughs> It's ridiculous.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, like kudos to kudos to the people who are able to sleep at、um, airports, but. Like no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not playing around with that. Yeah, no.、Um, okay, Shannon, what do you have for us today? Well, if you remember from the ending of last episode, we、um, kind of just spur of the moment decided we want to talk about reincarnation. Yes. Um, I think that's very fascinating. I was just talking to uh my uh <laughs> landlord. <laughs> We'll call my landlord、um, about re- reincarnation. I rent her space for no cost to record the、mm-hmm. podcast in her living room. Anyway, <laughs>、um, yeah. So reincarnation is something that is seen in multiple cultures and 
multiple religions, some not religions, maybe just belief systems. <gasps> Shannon, before you start, before you start, I just wanted to thank, um, I just remember, I just wanted to thank the Outlandish Historians. They are a um, history podcast and they give us a shout out on uh, Twitter. So I just wanted to thank them. That was very nice of them. Everyone go check out the Outlandish Historians. Uh, Shannon and I certainly will. So that's it. Thank you. Now you can continue. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Outlandish. Thank you. <laughs> I am ready to dive. I have my swimsuit on. Let's get in the water. Okay. Just to be clear, you're a, are you a believer or no? I am a believer. But when I talk about it, I'm going to get into how it's not necessarily that I believe like the traditional sense of it. Ooh, sexy. Okay. I'm yeah. down. I'm down for it. Um, okay. I guess I'll just jump into it and then I'll let you know what I believe. So... Okay reincarnation do we come back is this truly the end this is why you don't let me start andre because i always act like i'm on a stage <laughs> can, can, can i guess that you don't want to come back you're like i'm tired let me rest in peace <laughs> yeah you're absolutely right I do not want to come back because I've already done this once and it was a pain in the ass for the first 23 years. I don't think I can see this happening over and over again. No, thank you. Um, thank you, next. Oh, wait, is that the right? I don't think that's the right. I, I don't think, think we can next. use that. <laughs> not today. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, regardless of what I want, the question still remains, is this a thing? If it is a thing, how does it work? Well... There are many ways to look at reincarnation. One very common one is the Buddhism approach, which is, which is um, the samsara, um, basically mm -hmm. the cycle of life, uh, meaning that we all just keep coming back over and over, but at what stage is the question. So if you do something horrible, like say you're Hitler, you come back as a bug, that would be like one mm -hmm. of the lower stages. And then you can possibly climb your way up, becoming an animal in the next life, and then from an animal to a human, human to, you know... What is it? There's a well. What's the like racial equivalent for insects? Like for racism, it, isn't that kind of insectism? Like, what's wrong with being a bug, huh? Okay, that's fair, but you have to acknowledge the fact that they are very tiny and we are very big in comparison. <laughs> so that 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 alone is bad. Plus, people just see a bug and they stomp on it. Like, you don't see a cat and start so, stomping uh, normally. So are elephants like the highest stage or something? Are blue whales like nirvana? Oh, the blue whale. <laughs> the blue whale is like if you were like kind of a bad person, like maybe you talked in the movie theater, but like <laughs> you weren't quite good enough to make human. That's... Like that's. And also, you don't have to go up or down. Sometimes you just stay the same. So mm -hmm. you just come back to a human. Yeah. However, the point is, Buddhism kind of talks about how. Your goal is to end samsara. You want to just completely die, be nothing, which I think is really fascinating. So that's the whole point of enlightenment. When you get become enlightened, that's it. You're done. So mm. that's fascinating to me. However, not the approach I want to talk about. Just wanted to bring that up for context. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really quite sure what type of reincarnation I'm talking about when I give you the example. Um, or the anecdote, I should say, that I'm about to come up with. But... I guess we're just going to go with, um, you're a human right now. When you die, you can come back as another human. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. And mine is a specific case. So first of all, what I want to talk about is yes, very, I very do. closely correlated to birthmarks. Does anyone um, here have, have birthmarks? Um, and by anyone, one I mean Andre. one on my left hand, on the upper left corner of my left hand, right, uh, right under like my index finger. And I have, well, I have a bunch of my skin, but I think those are just freckles, actually. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so, you know, that, okay, so this is kind of bizarre. I have that, and then on the upper right corner of the palm of my right foot, I have the same exact one. So that's kind of interesting. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. That has to mean something. I wonder what that means. Yeah, it has to. Oh, I got it. Okay, I'll bring that up later. Okay. Later, just remind me. <laughs> okay, so I actually have one as well, obviously. I mean, mine is on my upper thigh, on the back of my leg. 
and it's shaped like a one, which I think is very fascinating. However, whatever, we're just establishing it. So <laughs> some people believe that birthmarks are a result of a past life. So when reincarnated, the traumatic or physically painful experiences that we experience in that life are left as marks on our skin. There's a Dr. Ian Stevenson. He investigated over 120 cases of children with birthmarks to see what they thought about that, if they were making mentions of being reincarnated, anything like that. Um, so children are the biggest reporters of reincarnation, which you'll see a lot, mostly in horror stories, but also in some documented cases. You know, like, I used to be named Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what are you talking about, Samantha? Go back to bed. But, mm -hmm. I mean... We have talked a lot about how children could be connected to stuff, you know, that we don't, we aren't necessarily aware of because they are younger. They're more new to this world. Maybe they see something that we don't. Yeah. Um, maybe they remember their past lives. Maybe there are no past lives. <laughs> so there was a Dr. Tucker and he taught at the University of Virginia and did research. Ooh. He has continued the work into Dr. Stevenson's studies of reincarnation, um, particularly He's examined a lot of incidents where children claim ownership over the items of deceased relatives. So that's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, it could just be like toddlers being like, that's mine. You know what I mean? And they just want to own everything and everything is their toy. But uh -huh. also when they are in a room full of objects and they choose something that your great grandmother had and it's like, that's mine. I remember that. That's a little bit creepy. Like that's a little bit children of the corn. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, in some cultures, uh, people are known to mark loved ones' bodies so they can easily find them in another life. And in some serious cases, birthmarks indicate exactly how some people died. And so that's what I was thinking about in terms of your birthmarks. That makes total sense. I That means I got injected <laughs> on the hand with, like, radioactive... Oh my god. Fucking... Okay, no, you said it was your left hand and your right foot, right? <laughs> Yeah. What if you were, what if they took your left hand and your right foot and they nailed it together and they hung you upside down like a hog? That'd be pretty fucking weird. <laughs> like, what, like a, re like a wreath. Maybe they like slit your throat and <laughs> just let you bleed out like that. I guess. I just like, that, that seems very like contortionist. <laughs> um, like my left hand with my right foot i would look like a circle so they they, they hang me up like a christmas okay, wreath on but a door maybe your or other your left foot and your right hand were also tied together but they weren't nailed together hard enough you know what i mean <laughs> so you're like you're just like hog tied okay. like you're upside down hog tied that's what i'm seeing here that's what i'm experiencing okay <laughs> um i think mine could possibly be a bullet wound shot in the femoral artery um blood out mm. maybe it's just an arrow i don't know could be anything um, yeah, so that's what I want to talk about, is birthmarks. Do they indicate how we died in our past life? I say no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that, or you just... Um, I think that... I mean, I guess... I mean, I guess, like, people will sometimes do this to me with things that I want to believe in, and I'll be like, uh, oh, you're just being closed-minded. But for me, it's just like, I... I guess I haven't heard anything that I don't know, that, like, convinces me to believe that. So I guess I'll let you talk. Okay. I mean, I, just playing the devil's advocate here, you know, if the devil's perfectly reasonable, um, <laughs> I, it's probably honestly just concentrated mel mel melanin, is that what it's called, in our skin? Melatonin. No, melatonin is not in your skin. Oh, yeah, never mind. <laughs> Leave one. You were wrong. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Melanin, melanin. But it's fun to think about. It's it's fun. Um, So there is a website where I was getting a lot of this information called The Speaking Tree. And they have a list of classifications for, um, I guess, what would you call skin impurities. <laughs> so they have mm. noted that a slightly curved birthmark indicates a fatal stab wound fascinating anyone mm. listening go check warts that are on your skin from birth indicate that you died during the black death or a plague freckles mean death by fire so i that one wait wait a minute what, what was the second one again uh warts okay so if you have warts that means you died during the black plague okay but like if you're living right now like was your last reincarnation 500 years ago yeah, I mean, that's 
That's a good and there point. There were none in between. That kind of sucks. And, and and if so, that's not how reincarnation is supposed to work. I don't think. Well, how is it supposed to work? At least not the in the Buddhist sense. Well, how it's supposed to work is that like you basically get reborn or put back into someone's womb as soon as you die. Mm, okay. Well, what if it's like you're waiting in line, and because there's so many dead people, you're waiting in line for 500 years. Oh my god, but there's some fucking reincarnation, like, DMV Purgatory? in heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you take a ticket, and you just wait. <laughs> I mean, the same thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you just wait till like, you can reincarnate. <laughs> and you, like, have a your ticket in your hand, you can swap it with someone else, and they die by gunshot, and then you don't have to have a nasty wart. Yeah. That'd be pretty yeah. sick. But we don't know. Maybe it is like Beetlejuice. The specific <laughs> example I wanted to talk about is something I have heard about for many years. Um, this is something that has fascinated me for a while. And so I thought, wow, I'll talk about that. However, with that being said, I was very disappointed in my research to find out that the specific case has no names and no specific information necessarily which makes me think it might be anecdotal however the reporter was an anthropologist or scientist and mm. the only reason he didn't give those information the information of the names is for privacy reasons and so maybe it's not anecdotal but then again like all things we talk about there's not a lot of proof so take it with a grain of salt this occurred in golan heights syria so this was reported by a dr Losh. So, in Golan Heights, Syria, a three-year-old boy of Druze ethnic origin was just chilling, you know, doing his thing. This kid happened to have a long red birthmark on his forehead. So, when we're talking long, it was vertical, a little bit thick, and yeah, I mean, you can, if it's that big, I don't know. I don't know. Poor kid. Anyway, <laughs> so... The people in Golan Heights believed in reincarnation, so this didn't come out of nowhere. It would be a little bit different if it was a society that didn't, I guess. But they do. Okay. Right. So this three-year-old said, Hey, I was killed with an axe to the head. And the elders took him pretty seriously because they already believed in reincarnation. And also, that long red birthmark definitely looked like it could have been made by an axe. Mm -hmm. So what the elders did is they took him to the presumed home of his precious of his previous life. Um, he recognized the village, and upon entering, he remembered his name. Mm. The locals said that the man the boy claimed to be in the past had disappeared four years earlier. So the kid is three years old and four years. So maybe there's a one year waiting period. I don't know. I mean, no, like maybe it's just conception, and then at nine months, and that would make it around four years. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay, so the boy also remembered the full name of his killer. Um, I actually forgot to mention, this: when he found the village where he lived, that actually took three tries. Mm -hmm. So he, the elders took him to a village. He was like, no, this isn't it. They took him to another, this isn't it. And then the third one fit just right. <laughs> That's pretty fucking weird. Yeah, so he did. He They found the one on the third try. So he said that he remembered the full name of his killer. And remember, this is a three-year-old boy. <sighs> I've met a few three-year-olds. They're not that, like, I don't know. Talking to them isn't that fun. So I find all this really fascinating that he was able to remember the names and stuff. <laughs> um, when confronted, the alleged murderer denied the accusations. This was the neighbor of the man who was dead, or at least missing, four years ago. Yeah. So the boy yeah. said, okay, well, I know he killed me. I can lead you to the burial ground. Oh my god. So, <laughs> the boy led the elders to the burial ground. They dug, and they found a skeleton with the wounds matching an axe to the head. Damn. They also walked. They walked a little bit further, and they recovered an axe. The killer, terrified by this, admitted to the crime. And I guess what happened is that the man and the neighbor got into a fight. And he axed him. He axed him hard. Um, yeah, ax you do. <laughs> you know, you accidentally axe your neighbor during a fight. Wow. Is it an accident? You you can... I don't know. People hate their neighbors, honestly. How did that kid... That left me shook. Yeah, it's crazy. And Dr. Losh, he was the person handling this case. He reported this to uh, Trutz Hardo, who wrote this, or at least recorded it in his book, Children Who Have Lived Before, Reincarnation Today. And 
there is um, multiple reportings of this. You can find it online too. Some go into a little bit more detail, but this main story stays the same. And he managed to find the body and the axe and the killer. <laughs> wow. So is this something that actually happened or I don't know. What else uh, could it be? I mean, <laughs> unless you have some good evidence to the contrary, this seems pretty extraordinary and kind of hard to explain away. So Right. Like, like either it's all made up or maybe, maybe someone knew that the man had done it and so he used the kid as a ploy. But it, you also have to realize, like, this kid was born in a village, like, three villages over. He was just a three-year-old mm-hmm. kid in, like, they're, they're like... They're not, like, on the internet in chat rooms searching for people, you know what I mean? Like, it'd be hard to convince this kid to go on this journey. <laughs> I just... I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe you just offer him a McDonald's gift card, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess if... I mean, the whole thing could be a hoax, you know, that's the easiest... Yeah. Right. But also, if you're a doctor, why would you lie? I mean, that's kind of... I guess you have many reasons to lie about a lot of things. It's just you were in school for so long. You're going to throw it all away on a hoax. Maybe he's gotten, like, nothing good since school, so he's just trying his hand at, like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, One of the... Because, shockingly, when I was, like, doing the research, I found a lot of interesting cases with kids that kind of did similar things, not quite to the extent of finding a dead body, but where... um. They remembered things and it was all kind of corroborated and those are documented and they do have the kids names and stuff like that and that's really fascinating but one of the things that they said could be the reason for it is false memories like therapists kind of suggesting inadvertently oh maybe you were this person or you know and then those memories start to form yeah except that this kid wasn't seeing therapists and even if it was the elders mm-hmm. who were like implanting those ideas into his head Unless the elders knew that, you know, like if, if it was the elders implanting these ideas into his head, the elders didn't know about the dead kid unless they did, which means they killed the kid, which to me is like, why would you want to uncover that? <laughs> yeah. And just to clarify, it wasn't a kid that was a dead body. It was like a full grown man. Oh, okay. Never mind. But yeah. still, like murder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean,. If this is real, I kind of question the way it works, too. You know, like like you said, like it's supposed to happen instantly. Um, I guess three-year-old boy four years ago, that makes sense. But also, like, why that kid? Like, I guess it was nearby? Does that... I don't know. I mean, it, it could have been that. It could, it could have been that the spirit was vengeful and was, like, trying to find, like, a body nearby where he could, like... Right! Yeah, go and... Don't you think that's a possibility too, though? Maybe it was just the ghost possessing him. I mean, no, no, no. I shouldn't have said possession. I should have said, like... Well, that's the thing. That's one of the theories that I was going to talk about. That maybe reincarnation isn't just, like, straight up. You are a person, and then you die. And you are... You are born again, and you're just you, but little. (laughs) Like, no. I think that it's more like... Well, like, I think I talked to you about this, like the movie the Pro- the the Prodigy that I saw recently, mm-hmm. the new horror movie that came out. I thought it was really interesting because the premise of it is basically like this kid. Um, I guess you could call it possession, but not really because it's from birth. So that's what that's what makes it different for me. But this kid essentially is born remembering a past life, and um, the past like the per the, the past life person living in him is actually this like romanian murderer um and the reason he Hmm. um like the reason that he's reincarnated is because he has some unfinished business and like according to the movie like when people reincarnate into like someone else's body um aka the kid's body so because the kid still is his own person with his own spirit it just so happens that like there's another spirit in there living with him Hmm. so it does it is kind of like possession except it's like possession from birth yeah um uh, like yeah like the movie logic is the spirits return when they have unfinished business and once they're done with that business they leave um so yeah that's kind of more where i'm aiming i guess that makes sense i don't know though because then that that completely draws more on the paranormal thing which you know i'm totally not on board with but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i like the idea of like it being like energy like we're just atoms and our atoms need to go somewhere but I, mean, I don't know. 
to, to me, that would, like, theory that I mentioned would explain why kids usually forget about their past lives or stop talking about it when, like, their parents bring them to the burial ground or bring them to the house they always talk about or bring them to the town where they say they're from. Like, they feel like they, they, get, they become fulfilled, whatever they felt they had to do. And that kind of old spirit kind of, mm. like, leaves them in a sense. And the kids, because all these, like, all the cases that I looked at, the kids, like, by age eight, nine they stop talking about it altogether and then they leave a normal life. Yeah. So that would explain that. I mean, there's another theory, um, which I'll talk about later, but yeah, that's interesting. The theory that I said I was going to mention later, I guess I might as well mention it now, which was like the other thing that I read was that there's the possibility. The other theory that I was going to mention is that there's a possibility that our spiritual guides, um, like people who are really close to us in life, like friends or family members who really influenced us, um, they are the souls that are closest to us in like a past life. And then when we like are born again, um, these guides may like observe and even experience by proxy, like many of our thoughts and like, our, our actions on earth. So basically what I'm saying is like a kid, who is think is saying like oh i had a past life that might not necessarily be that kid's past life but a, a person really close to them so like children displaying past life memories like m might not actually hmm. be like direct reincarnation of the people whose memories they claim to share you know what about i mean we are totally going more into a conversational mode at this point but what if like what if we talk about genetics and stuff like that how we can be very similar and honestly and... science talk let's rebrand this podcast um <laughs> but no but what were you gonna say about it well like you know like you're just like your grandmother stuff like that where you're very similar to your family and maybe memories and stuff and we obviously know like depression is hereditary like that can be passed down not always but sometimes and like if that can be passed down why can't uh aptitudes or feelings towards things stuff like that because like uh, I mean, it's a little bit extra, but I was really close to my great aunt because my grandparents were dead by the time I was a baby. Mm -hmm. So my great aunt was like my grandma and like we were so similar, like in just the things we thought and our interests and stuff like that. Like even now today, we're very similar to her. And I mean, like with, with with like in that vein, you could make you can make an argument as grand as like. You know, like, this explains why we feel the same way about, <laughs> I don't know, like, about dolphins. Like, my, I don't know, my grandpa and I or something. But, like, th this wouldn't explain, like, the kid who was like, <laughs> I was buried here. Here's my body. Like, damn, boy, shit. How do you do that? Right. Like, I don't think, I don't think, I think this is different. Well, I mean, like, maybe it's not just the things that you like, but it's also, like, your memories. Like, maybe you remember, you can kind of remember what they experience if that makes sense and you kind of think it's yours because you remember it mm. i mean that's just that's just like a false self-implanted memory i'm sure that's a thing yeah but yeah again like you don't have at that point any information that you that you like didn't already hear from another source you know what i mean like but what if it what if it was just there in your brain you know what i mean through I mean, genetics is what and I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I just don't see how that could happen. Or, like, rather, I don't see the venue for it. Like, you're not really saying, like, you know what I mean? Like, what, what, why? Like, why? I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, sorry for shutting down your <laughs> That was harsh. I was like, no, it's <laughs> fucking dumb. No. <laughs> well, now you said that. <laughs> No, um, I don't think that. I just, I don't know. I guess I already, like, had a hard time. Um, yeah, like, researching this stuff, I already had a hard time, like, believing in it because I was really unsure. And then when I finally did believe in it, I didn't, I didn't, I don't believe in it in, like, the traditional sense. So I guess I'm having, like, a hard time, a hard time having, like, my envelope pushed on this topic because I'm like, but why? And, like, this was totally like, your idea too. You you pushed so hard. No, I think it's I think it's so interesting, but <laughs> that doesn't mean that I that I believed it when I suggested it. I didn't. Right, I don't believe um, it either. But 
<laughs> Always keep your mind open. Um. Okay. I wanna. I wanna. I wanna like give Ray D a little something because I don't want to just like sh- shut it down like that. So if I really think about it, I guess. I guess that if you're really close to someone and maybe they like hold your head and like touch your temples, like maybe you can like transfer energy or something or like through like a hug or a really emotional bonding <laughs> moment, maybe some energy gets like transferred out of their body into yours and all of a sudden you remember, all of a sudden you remember this like memory oh my gosh. from like your grandpa when he was a kid, all of a sudden that's like passed on to you and you're like, holy shit that I have a past life. Oh my god. No, no, no. Okay, so I don't mean that because you're close that you, like, have that. I'm saying that you have the past life because, because, okay, it's really hard to explain. I'm saying that the past life is a result of you being the same person, basically. Mm. Because reproduction is just making a copy of yourself oh, in your own okay. DNA. Oh, okay. That's not yeah. what I understood. So it's okay. not like... No, it's not like you like, oh, I like this one. Like <laughs> I like this one. Fuck the other kids. I like this one. And not like that. I'm saying that because you're so similar, you're already connected. Like that would be—it's hard to explain. That would be one way of natural selection, honestly. <laughs> Fuck that kid. I like this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shoot. Yeah, you're you're kind of talking about like um, it's almost like a genetic glitch in a sense. Like right. Yeah, we made this copy of you, but like nature didn't intend for the copy to remember anything from its past copy life, but it does, and that's a glitch. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um. And, and, and yeah, and then that would explain why you're so similar to the person who you were copied from. Exactly. So you're not similar just because you like them. You're just you just mm. are similar because you are them. So it's not reincarnation. It's yes, just it's be. just reproduction. That's an interesting idea. Um, you bastard, coming down hard on me. I, I fuck you. <laughs> I didn't understand <laughs> what you were saying. I was like, what? Um, <laughs> Huh, I don't know how to, like... This is not a TLC <laughs> movie, okay? I don't know. Like, I, I don't like believing that you re- like you you really are not an individual. Like, you really are just, like, a, a product of the mixtures that happen in your environment. And you're, you're, bu- you're about a copy. Right. Like, I don't like that. I mean, even if that's the case, you always have a choice. You can always decide who you are, no matter what, you know? Maybe your predispositions. Oh my god, oh my god now we're getting into... Yeah, we're getting into like free will versus predetermination. <laughs> That's right. So interesting. We should like do a little like uh, we should do a scary talk episode where the subtext is just like philosophy talk, Ew. basically. Uh, and we should tackle something big. And boy, is that topic big! Holy shit! I felt like passionate conversations with acquaintances about free will mm. um, and and predestination. I've had conversations that are that get very heated about how even if like free will really were not to be real it wouldn't even matter actually i have a lot of thoughts on it um and a lot of them connect to the matrix trilogy so welcome to my head uh... <laughs> <laughs> i love the matrix <laughs> uh, maybe we should get like a guest on for that that would be fun yes yes like we can just have like a stoner talk with some other person someone you know? who was actually like like a fan of the matrix and like knows everything about it <laughs> um, that'd be good we could draw a lot of parallels okay so let me talk to you about my case okay so my case is actually two cases so th- i found two cases of two kids who i found super interesting and um but neither case is too long so i think i'll be able to condense them into like the remainder of our time and again they're both really good so okay uh let's start with uh james laninger so James Laninger, unless it's Laninger, but I'm pretty sure it's Laninger. So James Laninger, um, he lives in Louisiana. And when he was two and a half, this kid, he started talking about like these dreams that he would have of being a man called Lieutenant James McCready Huston. Huh. So, yes. So James went on to say um to his parents uh, again two and a half years old which would freak me the <laughs> fuck out if i was a parent um that he used to be a world war ii fighter pilot can't relate <laughs> um he said that he was a fighter pilot from union town uh, union town pennsylvania in his past life and that he had been killed in iwo jima uh, more than 50 years before so this throws kind of like a fork into again what we were talking about like how does reincarnation work exactly like did this kid die 50 years ago 
like waited yeah. in DMV, like in heaven DMV, and then came back now? Or does he just not remember his most recent past lives? Ooh, I have an idea. What if it has to do with finding the right body, like the right vessel? Um... Maybe you don't like the parents and you're like, mm, that kid's going to be ugly. I'm going to choose the next one. <laughs> That's interesting. I, guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that would be me as a spirit in heaven. I agree. <laughs> um... You're like pop stars only. <laughs> <laughs> um so i i i don't know i don't know but that's an interesting question to like bring up again like why why is this what he is this what he is remembering the one that was 50 years ago um were there any more in between before 50 years i ago? mean so... i also kind of want to i'm so sorry for interjecting for this of all things no, no, <laughs> i just want to say time man do we even know time is real? Like, for them, 50 years, we don't know. We don't know what it's like. We don't know what it's like to be dead. <laughs> I said we were going to do Philosopher Talk another episode, Jen, and stay on track. I had to bring it up. <laughs> no, but honestly, yeah, like, I, I remember watching like, a couple of YouTube videos the other day about, like, does time even exist? And, like, my mind was, like, taking for a trip. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so this kid says this to his parents the parents were like what the fuck so um again he was two and he started talking a lot about aviation all of a sudden and his <laughs> knowledge on aviation was like astounding according to the parents and they can understand how because they didn't know anything about it and like the kid didn't watch this on tv or anything so and he, he would talk about the air force and how he flew in it whatever he then uh, started having nightmares um and he would um he, he'd say that his nightmares were about being shut down by uh uh, a Japanese plane with a red sun on the side, according to the article. Huh. So, uh, these were the, like, Japanese Empire fighter pilot planes, basically. That's what he's describing. And the parents knew that, like, oh, shit, like, so, so the kid is, like, he, he's right, like, that's what they look like, but how could he know this? Like, is the Wait. kid at two years old going on the internet and looking up what, like, World War II fighter planes from Japan looked like? No. So, there was, again, no way that this kid could have known this. And um, his nightmares then started... Okay, so he started having these nightmares. But the reason the nightmares happened were because his um, dad took him to a flight museum. So then I read that. And I was like, okay, so this kind of throws a fork into the thing. Because it's like, maybe at the flight museum, the kid did see, like, a Japanese fighter plane. And he could just be lying. Mm -hmm. But then, like, the account continues. And basically... What the article describes is that um, the kid would um, keep having nightmares and sometimes he would um, scream at the top of his voice like, this is, this is a quote, like, airplane crash, on fire, can't get out, help. Oh. And he'd be like kicking and pointing to the ceiling. At one point, like his mom took him shopping and he, um, the mom pointed out a plane in a shop window and she was like look like the plane has a bomb at the bottom and the kid like at two years old was like no mom you stupid bitch that's not a bomb that's a drop tank oh my uh, gosh <laughs> okay. this is this so, kid's legit <laughs> so okay i just i wanted to bring up like the, the fork in the theory because i i want to like you know give credence to like the like the skeptics but um like unless the parents just made the whole thing up just for the kick of it right like, I don't think that they're lying. And I think that the nightmares starting after he, like, like the dad took the kid to the museum. Um, what that actually means is like it actually makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense. So, like to me, what that actually means is that um, the kid, like going to the museum and seeing stuff from that era, if anything, like kicked his memory, like back into gear and was like, Oh shit. And then like all the PTSD came back from yeah, his past yeah, life. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Uh, so you could take it either way. Either, like, yeah, exactly. So um, so that's what the kid said. <laughs> it's a drop tank, mom. Well, also, like, how... Okay, I know two and a half year olds who would gladly eat anything. <laughs> like, they're not they're not that smart. Like, I know all parents want to believe, like, oh, my kid's so much smarter than all the other kids. No, okay, this kid knows how airplanes work. Like, he's, yeah. you can't retain all that from one visit to the right. museum. Like... That's crazy. Right. Plus, again, un unless this is all a lie, the museum visit is really inconsequential because the kid was saying that he was a fighter pilot, like, before they ever went to this museum. Again, okay, the dad yeah. took him because the kid was so adamant. 
So yeah, really inconsequential. The mom didn't know what a drop tank was. <laughs> Relatable. And <laughs> um, the the kid then went on to tell his parents that he had flown a plane called a Corsair, which took off from a boat called an Atoma. So interesting fact to remember. Number one. Um, something else. Uh, this, I just found this interesting. Um, his parents um, served him meatloaf one day for lunch, and James said, uh, "He said meatloaf. I haven't had this since I wasn't the Natoma. Can you imagine like your kid saying that?" <laughs> <laughs> I feel like send it back. <laughs> um. Yeah, like, but that's just, like, that would be so shocking. It's just weird. Um, it's like having, like, a grandpa yeah. as a child. I know. I know. Okay, so... um, So then Bruce, James' father, decided to do some research uh, of his own. He, he discovers that there was a small escort carrier called the Natoma Bay which had been in the Battle of Iwo Jima, which, according to James, is where he died 50 Ooh. years ago. So the parents keep researching, and they find that there indeed had been a pilot called James Huston. No! Um, no! Yeah, I put an exclamation like mark next to that, because I was fucking shook. Um, and you can look this up. Like, he existed. Um, and he was hit by Japanese fire and like his engine got fucked up. So like the plane went down and he died. He died March 3rd, 1945. Oh my God. Um, when this case came out, like the 50 year mark was like pretty accurate. So the kid was right. Um, okay. Another twist to this, like, which is pretty fucking incredible. Um, Huston's sister, uh, her name is. Anne Barron. She was 87 years old um, when the family decided to have James, like, visit her. <laughs> so, they... Okay, so they find out, the parents find out that the kid isn't lying, that the pilot did exist, and then they decide to track down the pilot's sister, which, if I was a sister, I'd be like, like, my brother died years ago. Can you, like, le like leave me alone, like, suffer in right. peace? But, actually... Um, the sister, like, they tracked her down, they talked to her, and she said that listening to Jane's story, she totally believed him. <laughs> and this is a quote of, of the sister. He knows too many things. For some reason, he knows what happened. Um, so she was shook, and she believes the kid. Can you believe that? It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Like, this 87-year-old lady was like, this little kid is my brother who died 50 years ago. I also want to point out that she's 87 and maybe her last dip out of this world was like, <laughs> all right, I'll play along. Honestly. Yeah. That was pretty funny. So, uh, Oh, okay. So the, the pilot's cousin, uh, Bob <laughs> was 74 uh, at the time also had this to say, and this is a quote. He said to me, it's amazing. Everything the boy has said is exactly the account told to James Huston's father. And also my mother, there is no way this child could have known that. So yeah, that's what the cousin said. This was so okay. This was so heartbreaking when I read this. Uh, when James was six years old in two thousand and four, so I guess we can make the math now. He was six in two thousand and four, so that means he was two in two thousand. Um, and he saw the sister when he was yeah, also when he was around six. Never mind then. So two thousand and four. So this kid is what he is like twenty now. Damn. Hmm. Wow. And I bet you he was like not talking about it still because yeah. it seems that like his dream was fulfilled. If his dream was to like see his family and friends again, um, which is exactly what yeah. it's exactly what I was going to mention. So the heartbreaking part about this is the article states that when James was six back in 2004, his father took him to like a vet reunion. And, um, and these were all these were all people who uh, had served on the Natoma Uh and when the kid was there, he was able to recognize, like, some of his friends after 50, 60 years. And he, he said, they're so old. Oh, my God. I know. But, like, that's so sad. It just made me think, like, if this is true, like, can you imagine, like, you being this kid and seeing yourself as how you looked before you died? In your past life. So James must like must have been like what? 20 something? He was a young soldier. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know. That's how you see yourself 
in the metaphorical mirror, right? And then you go see your friends and they're all like in their 70s and 80s and you're like, oh my God. Mm. And it's like, I don't know. It's very like Captain America, you know, like, like at the end of the first movie. Yeah. Um, when he reunites with like his love from like 50 years ago, he was like frozen in a ice cube or some shit for 50 years. And the woman's like dying now. Oh. Um, but he still like loves her. Oh, oh so that sad. hurts. I know. Um, so. Uh, they wrote a book about this. The parents wrote, wrote a book about, about Jane's uh, experience. And uh, the book is very popular. Um, and that is the story of James. Thoughts? Well, I feel like this one's pretty believable. Um, the skeptic in me says, well, I guess information is pretty easily accessed. Maybe there's a way that he could have found all this out. But also, I just don't, I don't, I, I feel like it's really hard to be skeptical with this because he was two. Exactly. Like, that's so young to be able to regurgitate all of that if someone told you to. And it's so young to, like, like, I don't know. I buy it. I don't know why I buy I mean, it. Like, I mean, like, he wouldn't really have to regurgitate it, like, in front of a camera or anything because this is all, like, from the parents' account. True. Um, uh so this could all be a hoax but it, it's what i come like it, it's what i come back to literally every episode everything could be a fucking lie and everything could be a fucking yeah. hoax but if that's what you believe already like this is the wrong podcast right. for you like we're clearly about giving topics that aren't usually very i don't know like seriously considered like the benefit of the doubt because like the default in mainstream society is to not give those topics the benefit of the doubt. So could everything be a hoax? Yeah, of course, but that's not really the point. We're missing it in that case. Um, which is why, like, of course I think that too. I'm like, ah, oh, this could all be a lie. But then I'm like, <laughs> but like, I'm reading these for a reason. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah. almost like inspired by this kind of stuff. Cause I'm like, but what if, like, and what if it's not a lie at all? And yeah. I just wonder how or why, which I guess like what you were talking about with the unfinished business, that makes sense. But also it's like, mm -hmm. this dude probably doesn't remember this if it was true. So like, what do you think he's doing now? Is he in the Air Force? <laughs> um, <laughs> the kid? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it doesn't say. There's not like a lot of follow-up here, but um, no, I, I doubt it. I think, again, if my theory is right, I think that, like, the, the spirit or whatever, like, attaches to this thing before, attaches to, like, a kid before it's born and then does, like, finishes whatever business it has to and then it leaves. And I don't think, like, it influences the, the original host's life, like, any longer. Um, calling it a host really makes it sound like a possession. <laughs> um, I also want to yeah. say, like, like, for the parents, there isn't much to gain monetarily from this, you know? Like, I'm just gonna say it, book sales do not give you that much money. Like, there's a point where even if you sell, like, 50000 there's no guarantee you'll sell the same amount next year. So, I mean, um, Shannon, please explain to the listeners how you are a reputable source for this. Oh, hi, my name's Shannon. I have a bachelor's degree in creative writing, and that means that either I'm going to be a shitty writer or I'm going to work in food service. I'm currently looking for barista jobs. I have one year of experience. Please hire me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Political talk. We should rebrand. Are you kidding me? Talk about the injustices of the, like, the current American economy. <gasps> Show. Oh, my God. I can't oh. even keep up with that. You can talk like that, and then I'll be like. Bachelor's degree is a new high school <sighs> diploma. Oh, my God. I got my high school degree from a charter oh, school, I and I was the dog historian of five people. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, what were we talking about? Reincarnation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, I think that there's not much benefit to the, for them to lie, because one, you're going to look crazy. Two, you're not going to get that much money. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, noted. So writing, not a lot of moolah there. Got it. Um... Okay. There is not, unless you write porn. Unless, really? Right, E.L. James with that Fifty Shades of Grey crap? Come on. I mean, They're... I know, but like, he's the, you know, like, she's the outlier because, like, that was just the, the one book that did big. But, like, in general, does, like, I don't know, does, like, writing and selling, like, your erotica stories actually make you more money than. Um, I feel like it might, because if you think about it, there's a huge market for that. Like, there are plenty of women who just. They can't get it any other way. Like, the, the mind is you don't powerful. Think it's like, 
maybe like 12 years ago it wasn't very saturated but i feel like at this point it's as saturated as basically any other genre oh, so you're probably right yeah i didn't think about that because especially with online publishing self-publishing you gotta be like yeah oh my god shannon i don't know how we're gonna do this because it's not gonna be scary at all but we have to do an episode of just like funny talk or whatever the fuck where we talk about some of the titles that i have found on amazon about like <laughs> <laughs> like some of these self-published and i don't know if you ever like self-published because you know you have a creative writing bachelor's degree i'm sure you can write oh. um but <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't write and, and and no what i'm saying is and if you can't write but you don't have a publishing house behind you uh apparently like a lot of people say like you know your best option is to like just self-publish mm. on amazon or whatever sell your book and i can tell that a lot of these people like really just don't know what the fuck they're doing, but they go for it. And honestly, right. kudos to them. Uh, but bro, some of the some of the titles that I have found there <laughs> on Amazon, some of like the erotic titles, even non-erotic, but it's just fucking insane. And I, I'll read some of the stuff just for my own amusement. And boy, like <laughs> those storylines are gold. Yeah, I mean, I I just don't want to do that whatsoever because self-publishing is just <laughs> so much responsibility. It's so saturated. I don't think that I have what it takes to market my own work. I would rather have a publisher do it for me. And also, it's just nice for someone else to say I'm good rather than me being like, I'm good, fuck you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not that pretentious. Like, I'd rather just wait. Also, something I'm learning yeah. is that 23 is not as old as I think it is, and I have literally like 70 more years to be published. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing matters. Time isn't real. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like being an author is very different from being like a pop star. Right. Like, if you're not young, you're like, bye. But like, authors, like, I don't know, like, how old was J.K. Rowling when she came out with the first Harry Potter? I think she was in her 30s. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's different. Yeah. Um, I'm not in a rush, I guess. Yeah, no, don't be, because you're going to, like, spoil your creative juices or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. So, second case is um, Cameron McCauley. So, Cameron McCauley um, lived his whole life in Glasgow, in Scotland. But um, at the age of two, again, age of two, um, he started talking about how his previous life, he had lived on the island of Barra, which uh, was uh, in the west coast of Scotland, around 200 miles away from where he and his family lived. So, he'd never again lived anywhere else, but he said that he was from this island. He started talking about a white house that overlooked the ocean and the beach, and he uh, would say that like there were airplanes where he used to live. And that they used to land on the beach, and then he could see them from his bedroom window. And uh, he talked about how he was very fond of a black and white dog that he had while he lived on the island of Barra. The parents were like, "What the fuck? <laughs> what? Um, we rather you had like an imaginary pig demon friend, like honestly." <laughs> oh no! I am so, evil. Um episode five up now so um the family had never been to Barra. neither had this kid again um but they were like fucking let's go fine like shut up we're gonna take you to the island so you can i don't know like feel fulfilled i guess that's like the common thread here that like whatever like spirit is reincarnating they need to like fulfill some kind of desire so they take the kid to the island and um his uh, dad on the island, the, this kid's dad in his past life, his name was Shane Robertson. And the kid said that he died uh, because he was knocked over by a car. Um, the kid's actual words were, quote, unquote, he didn't look both ways. So yeah. um, he said that uh, one of the strangest um things about where he used to live were like the toilets he um used to complain that like the kid complained that on Bara, his parents had three toilets like i didn't really get that part of the article like wait what's the complaint that they He's only have three, about three i know like i have one <laughs> i know like, <laughs> but anyway that's something he complained about so um he also would spend a long a, a lot of time drawing his house like from his past life which which was this like long wide building it was tall it was standing on the beach um he'd sit on like a chair uh and talk to his parents 
about his previous parents Ugh. and brothers and sisters. Can you imagine, like, as a parent being like fucking ungrateful I, and shit? Like, I would be mad. You're talking about how you're, yeah, how you're like old dad is so great, and here I am, like. Oh, but we only had <laughs> three toilets, so like, I guess you guys are all right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um. So yeah, he, he he talked about his previous family, um, and as time went on, he became um more like upset about the thought of um leaving his other mom he he'd, he'd cry and he'd feel bad because he wished that his mom knew that he was all right which i thought was really sweet um that's what the article says so the story became popular in like the area and it gained the attention of a film company and the film company um suggested that the family takes the kid to the island to see what happens and this is where I'm going back to the to where I was. So they go they go to the island, right? So they go to the island in 2006. Um, the kid was he was either six or seven. So uh, he's still very young. They go to the island. They are escorted by a child psychologist because the psychologist is also interesting in seeing what happens. And I guess seems maybe kind of a skeptic and just wants to see what's up. So. Um, mm-hmm. They go, he sees the house, like when the plane lands, he couldn't stop jumping up and down. And he said, quote unquote, I'm going home. I'm going home. Oh, God. Um, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> he just began like yelling um, when they landed on the beach and he ran into the house. Um, he, yeah. So he was very excited. Um, something that I forgot to mention actually is that the kid said that his previous mom had long brown hair that fell all the way down her back and that she used to read him stories from the Bible. However, the parents say that they weren't particularly religious um, and they'd never done this ever to him at home. So he, this is just like another factor that is unexplainable. I just forgot to mention that. Um, so uh, the kid was very excited to see the house. He, um, run the kid runs straight into the house he's very excited but then um he but then as soon as he gets to the door he becomes very quiet apparently he was like sad that his house didn't like look quite the same it was like like worn down and like unkempt and whatnot um but he was like oh whatever he kept exploring he was still excited so he kept running around um he could like identify all the nooks and crannies of the house the three toilets of course and um to his mother's surprise, when they went to the home's garden, he took them to his "quote unquote" secret entrance that he had been talking about to his parents for years. So there's that. Yeah, the kid was able to just like identify that. Um, so that was interesting. Is there anyone living at this house at this point? There was not. No, no. So again, the cat, the house was like ran down. Okay. And that's why the kid was sad when he first entered the door because he was like, "Oh, my old home looks so bad. Like no one's like kept it pretty and whatnot." So, which, which I wanted to point out because it's like, you know, like maybe the, the kid did have a connection to this house because if he was like sad by seeing it like this, like shit, like this must be true. So, yeah. Now, the strangest part of this, though, of this story, this one's a little different than the other one. Like everything doesn't like piece together quite so well. Is that the family, the research was able to find one of the surviving family members uh, from this kid's like alleged past life mm-hmm. uh, unfortunately like the relative didn't seem to know anything about a man called um shane robertson i forgot to mention that was the name that um that the kid said he had in his past life his name was shane robertson he didn't like have a specific profession at least not one that's mentioned in the article his thing is just that he lived in this big white tall house in the island of Barra. um so and his name was shane he, they found a family member uh, with the same last name, like allegedly from the same family tree. But this person didn't know anything about this Shane. Um, and uh, ho- however, um, the family, though, his family, like the Robertson family, he, they did have photos of the dog and the car that the little kid, Cameron, said he had seen in his visions. So, um... What the heck? 
Yeah, so like the the article theorizes that maybe the relative like was too young to know like Shane Robertson and so he won't remember it's it's but also like the age of the relative in question isn't specified so that made it difficult for me to understand uh how feasible that theory would be so um another dimension yeah but there must be i feel like there must be some reasonable explanation because like the kid got everything right but this yeah you know like yeah maybe the relative just wasn't like well the thing is that according to like the research the relative would have been at the house around about the same time that shane robertson lived in that house oh okay so to answer my own question the relative like was an old man when cameron like mm. saw him uh, when the little boy like met the relative the relative was an old man which means that he he would have been able to live with shane robertson the past life man in the same house around the same time which is why this article is like you know we don't really have anything to like explain that away that's kind of just like yeah. a fuck up on the kid's part like does that mean that he's lying though i don't know um as he grew older the kid began to lose memories of the island and um started living a normal life one of the last things that he mentioned was that um he would talk to his friends like the kid would talk to his kid friends and he'd say shit like quote oh. unquote don't worry about dying <sighs> just come back again I need to lay off with that <laughs> yeah so that was what, like one of the, that was one of the last things he said before like he stopped being a weird fucking kid and stopped talking about reincarnation um another thing was his mom once asked cameron how did you get here to me uh, and he replied, quote unquote, I fell through and went into your tummy. Oh, so yeah, fucking rad. Um, the psychologist, the, the psychologist that accompanied, sorry, to uh, accompany the, the family to the island, um, believed that it was just the kid's imagination. But like, like what the article argues is like, even if the kid had seen the house on like, television or something like that doesn't mean that he'd know like about the inside of the house or he would know the gate or the secret entrance that he took his parents through um and like the view from his bedroom window overlooking the beach like in the area where the planes landed like there's no way he could have known that so yeah explain that one <laughs> so is there actually any record of the shane robertson existing or do we just go by this old man not remembering him uh, no, there is. Okay. Uh, there is. But, like, this relative didn't, like, know oh, about okay. Robertson. And he was, allegedly, from the same Robertson family tree. Yeah. So, that's problematic. Right. I don't know most of my cousins, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know, that could explain it. Like, I don't know. I just feel like... I'm not gonna say that's inconsequential, but... It's not as big as everything else because but anyway, um, I, I don't want to say that that part is inconsequential. The part about the relative not knowing about Shane Robertson, but it like there's still a pile of other shit that this kid was able to like know about just mm -hmm. out of nowhere. That to me is really like, I don't know. Um, something I was thinking about when you were talking is the mom. Like he, he remembered the mom or whatever. And then I don't know. I was just going to like a narrative place of like, well, the the family member didn't remember him. What if like the mom either like kept the kid a secret or something, or maybe the mom's just crazy and what he's actually remembering is the mom's memories of thinking she had a son. But that's a little over dramatic. <laughs> Ooh, I like it though. I mean, yeah, yeah <laughs> it is a little dramatic. <laughs> um, so. I don't know. Like, I think what I believe at this point is <sighs> um, reincarnation is real, but no, you don't necessarily like come back as soon as you die. You do, but it could take years. And two, just reading this kids, th these kids' stories and how they both just go back to like normalcy afterwards, I think that it's also not a thing where 
you are literally reborn but rather you are your own person but something like somehow attached to you in the womb not in like a creepy way but like just some spirit or something that has some unfinished business and so they come into this world and use you to like be able to fulfill whatever they need to fulfill they use like your body as their vessel i guess you know like talking that and saying it a lot it all does sound very creepy and it sounds very much like possession but um yeah and then they leave yeah i think that i think that we've come to no conclusion at all <laughs> which is fine like this happens this happens right. often and it's fine because if we already like don't agree on exactly what we both believe from the get-go like you know like it, it's gonna be hard well, I believe in those specific stories. Like, I think those for sure. But I don't know what the cause is, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Like, I just, I feel hesitant to to make any firm assumptions about what happens after death, just as a rule. Okay, that's fair. Well, um, uh, if you guys listening have any explanations, or if you have any suggestions or other theories for how this could be explained. Um, uh, if you remember your past life, please tweet us. Yeah, if, or if you remember your past life, do comment. Please tell us about it. Tweet us. Um, leave us a comment on YouTube or on SoundCloud or like literally wherever you're listening. Um, also, rate this podcast. Quick segue. Um, we love when the podcast is rated. So um, give us five stars. We will take nothing less and we will ban you if you give us four stars. So, <laughs> Banned for life. <laughs> um, <laughs> until your next life you'll be able to listen to us <laughs> but yeah i mean let us know if you have anything um that's all i got shannon any um, last comments as i said before i am looking for a job please hire me <laughs> oh yeah also if anyone has any hookups for shannon. yeah we don't get paid for this we're doing this because we love you <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, uh, everyone, have a good night. Um, don't let the demons bite, honestly. Episode one, hello. Time isn't real. Time isn't real. Um, honestly, are we living in a simulation? Fucking episode eight or nine idea. <gasps> no, no, no. I am not ready to dive into that. Is that even scary? That's pretty scary to me. Are you kidding? Um, Maybe we can have bonus episodes where we just talk stoner thoughts. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> We, a lot of these come up during like a regular episode right. so I, I think we should or maybe we could just incorporate it into like the philosophical episode that i said we should have about free yeah. will because that's very much like that kind of thing um okay. anyway wow king of segues <laughs> and tangents um goodbye everyone goodbye. have a good night don't get possessed um if you reincarnate um give me a shout out on twitter be like it's real um I talk scary and remember that you can listen to us um on all podcast listening platforms we are on uh, soundcloud spotify apple Podcasts, google play etc as scary talk podcast shannon i will talk to you soon. already so long farewell okay and good night, good night everyone Bye bye <laughs>